The city tears down a public eyesore. And Atlanta breaks ground for a new public safety facility. That and more next on City Talk. Hello everyone, welcome to City Talk. I'm Thermis Bevel. The Office of Code Compliance demolished the Wishing Well Apartments in Southeast Atlanta. The apartment complex was a dumping ground and an eyesore in the community. Wishing Well has been a notoriously bad place. Uh, it has been covered uh, significantly by the media uh, and we're doing something about this uh, and other properties in the city of Atlanta. So I hope uh, that today uh, is a down payment on a commitment to the community. Certainly not the whole step, but a clear sign that when the community has a problem, raises an issue, and brings it to our attention, that we're going to do our best to do something about it. We're celebrating a demolition of something that's been a major problem in this community for the last two or three years. I've actually been talking to community residents this morning. They're happy about it. But they're also angry. They're angry because it took two or three years for us to get this tore down. Councilwoman Shepard says this is a victory for the community. The city started phase two of the Cascade Mays Streetscape Improvement Project. The Department of Public Works will install new sidewalks, crosswalks, and pedestrian lighting at the intersection of Cascade Road and Benjamin E. Mays Drive. These additions to the neighborhood will enhance pedestrian safety and improve the appearance of the community. This phase will continue to improve pedestrian mobility by connecting the residential area to the commercial corridor, as well as improving aesthetics and additional streetscape elements. Public Works is making upgrades throughout the city as part of the Capital Improvements Program. The Atlanta Police Department joined Councilmember Alex Wan for a public safety town hall meeting where constituents had a chance to discuss issues facing District 6 neighborhoods. Councilman Wan says meeting residents and hearing their concerns firsthand is vital to elevating quality of life, deterring crime, improving service delivery, and drafting legislation that impacts the district positively. Some residents said they appreciated having the opportunity to communicate their safety concerns directly to police department officials. Councilman C.T. Martin also held a town hall meeting where he and top city personnel discussed crime reduction, code enforcement issues, sanitation, street paving, water bill disputes, and the upcoming transportation tax. The town hall meeting also featured a question and answer session to address other concerns. The meeting was an opportunity to bring city departments to the community in an effort to share information about important city issues. Residents joined Councilman Ivory Lee Young Jr. for his quarterly town hall meeting where constituents received progress reports on current plans and initiatives under consideration. The group also talked about ways to improve delivery of services and they discussed how to enhance the quality of life in District 3 communities. The open forum gave constituents a chance to speak with city officials about a number of concerns. Northwest Atlanta gets the city's first combined fire station and police mini precinct. The city broke ground to build a new fire station 28 and zone 2 mini precinct on Hollywood Road. The facility in District 9's Riverside community will be about 12,000 square feet and will have a community room with space for 100 people. Councilwoman Felicia Moore says the new facility will have a positive impact on the neighborhood. Since 2002, the uh, Perry Bolton TAB was established and it was, the impetus was the Atlanta Housing Authority's Perry Home de demolition and the rebuilding of that community. But we also included the Bolton area, which includes this all the way to the Moores Mill Shopping Center, which I can't wait to dedicate as well. And so we're looking forward to this because the community wanted a focal point. Once one, we needed a decent place for our firefighters that we love so dearly in this neighborhood to have and to be housed. Two, we wanted to have a location where the police officers could use because we are at the very end of zone uh, two and we wanted a, a, a police mini precinct. And three, we wanted a community space where the community could gather and meet on a regular basis. 
Northwest Atlanta is a growing quadrant of the city, and this fire station and many precinct will serve the community's growing needs. Also in District 9, residents brought abandoned tires to Councilmember Moore's Tire Drive. The Tire Drive was an effort to spruce up District 9 neighborhoods and rid the area of illegally dumped tires. By disposing of unwanted tires, residents helped the environment and helped the community. The Atlanta City Council recently established a commission to study ways the city can better manage abandoned tires. A partnership between the city, the Atlanta Business Chronicle, and Coca-Cola resulted in a career fair at the Civic Center, attracting more than 3,000 job seekers. The job fair was part of Mayor Kasim Reed's Hire One initiative, a joint effort by the Mayor's Office and the Atlanta Business Chronicle to highlight Metro Atlanta businesses that hire new employees. More than 70 area companies offering 1,500 open positions participated in the career fair. Job seekers attended workshops that focused on resume writing and interview techniques. The city's Human Resources Commissioner says the decision to host a career fair was made with Atlanta's future economic development in mind. It's important for this administration and for Mayor Reed to really facilitate economic growth, and growth comes from jobs. And so it's important in this difficult time, in this challenging economy, to give qualified job seekers a place to come find employers who in fact have opportunities. Demand to attend the Hire One Job Fair was so large that organizers had to extend application deadlines. More than 1,500 companies have registered with the Hire One campaign, and those companies have hired nearly 15,000 new employees. Coming up, we sit down with Public Works Commissioner Richard Mendoza and Kirkwood is becoming the place to be for restaurants. Stay with us. Today we have Public Works Commissioner Richard Mendoza with us. Commissioner, thank you for being here. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. You became commissioner in 2010 and you're working hard to make Atlanta an efficient provider of transportation and solid waste services. Tell us about your vision for public works. Certainly. Uh, for public works, you know, my vision of course is to serve the citizens first. And I have a very dedicated, loyal, hardworking team of over 700 individuals in public works that on a daily basis uh, deliver those public works services to the community. Uh, I expect uh, the Department of Public Works for the City of Atlanta to be the regional leader in providing those services. And what that means exactly is delivering services in the area of transportation, fleet services, and solid waste services to the City of Atlanta in an excellent, efficient, and optimal manner, meaning that we do that uh, to the highest quality of service, be responsive, and do it at the lowest cost and as efficiently as possible. What's the City's plan for winter weather? Oh, we have a much different plan this year than last year. As you recall, uh, last January, we got hit with a fairly severe winter uh, weather event, one that caught us off guard, so to speak. For this year, we have added additional resources in terms of equipment, as well as implemented additional training and exercises for our employees, because the plan is not gonna work just with extra equipment alone. It's gonna take uh, execution, and what that means is our employees are going to have to perform and execute. And uh, actually, this morning, we are conducting additional training exercises for the employees of Public Works Watershed, as well as uh, Solid Waste, to be able to optimally uh, operate the additional equipment and resources to respond in the event that we do get a severe winter event uh, similar to last year. Providing quality customer service is one of your concerns. How can Public Works deliver better services to the people of Atlanta? Customer service is an emphasis for our department this year. Uh, there are many ways that we can improve on our past performance in the area of customer service. My first staff meeting when I came on board last summer with my executive staff because we need to set the example for customer service from the leadership of Public Works first was that I have an expectation and a practice to answer all communications, be that in, in the form of phone calls or emails within 24 hours uh, to our customers. And our customers range from both the citizens to the city council, to the mayor's office, to internal customers. They deserve a, a courtesy of a reply and follow through um, for uh, the, the issues that they share with us. So 
we have uh, made great strides in that area. We've also consolidated our customer service call center with Watershed and leverage resources at the phone center to reduce our customer call times as well as document um, those uh, service requests and make sure those are expeditiously put out to the appropriate department to respond. When you meet with residents, what are some of their concerns? Meeting with residents is, is actually one of my the favorite parts of this job that I enjoy because uh, we cannot lose sight in Public Works that uh, they are the ones that actually sign our paychecks and are the ones that are paying taxes uh, for us to deliver the services that they expect. Um, through the MPU system, through neighborhood town hall meetings, through partnership with the city council and the mayor's office, um, the, that interaction and that feedback is critically important for us to be successful. And, and their uh, concerns and issues that they share with us help us prioritize our work. Uh, the types of issues that we hear on a frequent basis are one surrounding our solid waste services. Solid waste services uh, in terms of picking up residential trash, uh, yard waste, recycling programs is critical to the health and quality of life for our city. So when we have issues with the responsiveness and reliability of those services, we want to hear those uh, issues and we want to hear them early so that we can take appropriate corrective measures. We also hear uh, quite often issues surrounding the traffic and, and congestion uh, of our Atlanta city roads. As you know, uh, the city of Atlanta is at the center of, of a regional uh, area and serves as a major employment and entertainment hub. Our, employment, our population actually swells to over twice during the day of our, our nighttime population. That puts st strains on our infrastructure in terms of the streets, traffic congestion. So we're very receptive to the comments and issues that are shared with us with the residents to seek out measures to mitigate uh, those problems uh, surrounding uh, traffic, surrounding uh, street conditions, uh, and so on. Um, so, you know, we, we work very hard to be receptive to our citizens' uh, complaints and then give them a time frame. This is very important, especially in area customer service. Give them a time frame of when they can expect some, some action. And uh, we may not always be able to implement the measure that they request, but give them alternatives that we can offer uh, to address their issue as, as alternatives that fit within our resources. When property owners receive their solid waste bills, sometimes they call City Hall, but they should contact the county about that. That's correct. Our solid waste bills are uh, managed by Fulton County, and they are issued uh, as part of their tax bills on an annual basis. Uh, many times we get questions that we're able to answer. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, citizens don't understand that there's different components of that tax bill. A part of it covers recycling services. A part of it covers the uh, residential trash. Uh, there's another component that covers street sweeping and general right-of-way maintenance that's based on their front footage fee. We can explain those types of, of uh, uh, parts or, and the uh, parts of the bill. But if they want to um, challenge the actual amount, then they need to contact Fulton County, and we can certainly direct them uh, to the appropriate person to answer the questions. Atlanta has a graffiti program to clean up the city. How is the graffiti removal program going? We're very excited about that program. Under the leadership of the Parks and Recreation Department, uh, the Department of Public Works, along with the Department of APD and Corrections, and planning and development services have joined in, and uh, collaborated to address our growing graffiti uh, abatement problem within the city. Uh, we've enjoyed uh, some uh, contributions from private sectors for, uh, in the terms of materials, paint, and, and paint brushes. We've established a graffiti hotline that's manned by our Public Works customer service representatives uh, to take in calls uh, from the public to address uh, problem graffiti areas. Uh, we've incorporated and partnered with civic groups on a volunteer basis to be able to supply them with those materials so that they can proactively go out and address graffiti within their own neighborhoods. And then uh, we've incorporated uh, prison labor uh, to uh, take care of a lot of graffiti areas working with corrections department. So, um, you know, graffiti affects the quality of life of all of our neighborhoods. Uh, there's such thing as public art and there's such things as as graffiti and to the extent 
that we're able to work together uh, with all the city departments as well as the community, uh, we feel confident that we're making an improvement in that area. And finally, Commissioner, Public Works has the Adopt a Spot program, which allows individuals or community groups to maintain public spaces. Tell us a little bit about that. Certainly. Uh, Adopt a Spot has actually been a program that Public Works has had for some time, uh, but we've never really actively uh, promoted it. Uh, last year, when I came on board, I worked with um, a public information officer, Ms. Valerie Bell Smith, to get and communicate out to the public that we do have an Adopt the Spot program because we do get calls from the community and from neighborhoods and from civic groups that have that passion for their neighborhood that they want to maintain it and they want to clean it. They realize the last couple of years have been challenging budget years for the department and that our resources are stretched thin in terms of maintaining the cleanliness and appearance of our city, which is vitally important, not only to our quality of life, but also to attracting uh, more folks to want to do commerce and live here. So by revamping the adoptive spot program and resourcing it uh, through our solid waste uh, division in, ter in terms of supplying safety vests, safety training, trash bags, and then coordinating the collection of, of uh, the, the litter that's gathered, we've been able to leverage uh, some of our uh, community partners to clean up the city. And that's one of the goals of Public Works. And it's in alignment uh, with the mayor's goals also to affect efficient Public Works services, leveraging all of our partners. Uh, I am happy to say that we have a number of participants that have signed up in the last year. Uh, we recognize them here in city council uh, chambers as well as with a uh, nice uh, recognition sign on the spot that they uh, adopt uh, to maintain and clean. So I'm excited about that and I look forward to its continued success. Commissioner Mendoza, thank you so much for being here. Certainly, it's my pleasure. And uh, I wanna thank the city of Atlanta for bringing me here uh, from uh, Texas. Uh, Georgia, I found that Southern hospitality is actually true <laughs> and I couldn't be made uh, more at home. When we come back, the Atlanta Bicycle Coalition kicks off its Let's Get Visible campaign and the city honors a local businessman. Back in a moment. Councilman Michael Bond honored the Tuskegee Airmen, America's first black military pilots. The celebration was a tribute to the 70th anniversary of the creation of the regiment. The airmen escorted bombers into enemy territory, flying over 1,200 combat missions during World War II. They received numerous awards for a number of accomplishments, missions, and outstanding service. Tuskegee Airmen refers to all men and women who were involved in the Army Air Corps program in the 1940s at the Tuskegee Army Air Field. Prior to 1940, African Americans were barred from flying for the military. Councilman Bond teamed up with the Atlanta Bicycle Coalition to launch its Let's Get Visible campaign. Bond, the Bicycle Coalition, and the Governor's Office of Highway Safety distributed hundreds of bike lights to riders who brought their bicycles to Hurt Park. Atlanta is trying to be on the leading edge of making sure that we're a mobile, mobile city, uh, that we're, of course, bike friendly, and that Atlanta is a safe place for not only for our motor vehicles, but obviously for those persons who matriculate on bicycles uh, throughout our city. State law requires bicycles to be fitted with proper lights or a reflector when riding in the dark. Councilmember Kwanzaa Hall was on hand as Digital Atlanta hosted Sharpie Slam, a live art battle. It was a competition between Atlanta's up-and-coming artists. Each team had 90 minutes to cover a backdrop using only Sharpie permanent markers and Sharpie paint markers. Digital Atlanta was a week-long series to celebrate technology and new media marketing achievements in Atlanta. Over 3,000 people attended the event, and the winning team was awarded $500. The Spotted Trotter went retail. Councilwoman Natalie Archibong joined the celebration for the long-awaited grand opening of its retail store. The group celebrated all things meat with several local restaurants cooking up their favorite dishes using Spotted Trotter meats. The store got its start by setting up shop at several local farmers markets and and around Kirkwood. 
My husband and I moved here in 2005 um, when I graduated from law school. Um, so we've been here the whole time and it was really important for us to invest in the community um, and just grow Kirkwood and let everyone else know why we like it so much. Councilmember Archibong says Kirkwood is quickly becoming the place to be for new businesses and she is thrilled to have this retail shop in the community. The Spotted Trotter uses organic herbs, produce, and hormone-free meats in its products. Councilwoman Archibong was a special guest at a one-day sales event for in-town housing. The lofts at Reynolds Town Crossing were sold in a one-day sale featuring a drawing of qualified buyers who make under $68,000. The two-bedroom, two-bath lofts on Memorial Drive have high-quality flooring, stainless steel appliances, an electric car charging station, and several other amenities. The lofts are part of the Atlanta Beltline's initiative to provide affordable in-town housing. Quite a few Atlantans turned out to honor Willie Watkins for his service to the community. He's the owner of Watkins Funeral Home, which has been in business since 1982. He has devoted much of his life to helping the bereaved through a difficult time. As his business expanded, Willie Watkins stayed true to his profession, offering caring service to his clients. He has served our community for many years, and his compassion and high standards earned him the 2011 Professional of the Year Award from the National Funeral Directors and Morticians Association. A special delivery to an Atlanta resident marked a milestone for a local group. City Talk's Troy Danicus has more. Mayor Kasim Reed joined Open Hand Volunteers to deliver the nonprofit organization's 20 millionth meal. The volunteer organization is powered by more than 25,000 individuals. Each meal is cooked by the volunteers and delivered across 17 Georgia counties. But Open Hand isn't just concerned with filling their clients' bellies. They also care about what goes into every meal. Every single meal that is going out into the community has always gone out with the intent of helping people to better manage their health and live a better quality of life. Open Hand is the only community-based NPO which provides comprehensive nutrition care. That means each meal is not only nutritious, but medically appropriate. The organization also provides their clients with nutrition education, therapy, and coaching. Summerhill resident Carolyn Barber is the recipient of the group's 20 millionth meal. Well, we can go eat together. All righty then. I shall sure appreciate this too. Well, thank you. Mayor Reed says that Open Hand is an invaluable source of charity for homebound seniors and other clients who are too sick to provide for themselves. They're meeting people at a point of need, meeting people where they are weak, uh, in a time where we have a very challenged economy and they're helping, uh, I think, uh, to share uh, in a compassionate way. And open hand officials are elated to have the city's leader deliver that milestone meal. To have the mayor of Atlanta, and especially one as, as uh, celebrated as Mayor Reed is, to have him take time from his day and actually deliver the meal along with our volunteer, it's an honor that we will never forget. For City Talk, I'm Troy Danicus. Mayor Kasim Reed presented Open Hand with the Phoenix Award for its 23 years of community service. The organization is wrapping up a $4.2 million capital campaign to help fund expansion and renovation of its Otley Drive facility. To keep up with Atlanta City Government, tune in to ATL 26. City Channel 26 is your window to City Hall. And you can always email us, send your questions or comments to citytalk at atlantaga.gov. The Liberty Mutual Fire Safety Pledge was our chance to give back to the brave men and women of Atlanta Fire Rescue who protect us every day. Liberty Mutual gives $10,000 every year to 10 fire departments where communities demonstrate a commitment to fire safety. Atlanta did well in the Fire Safety Pledge, but 10 other communities received the grants. Lexington, Kentucky and Norfolk, Virginia won in our division with the largest number of people pledging to be fire smart. NBA legend Shaquille O'Neal paid a visit to Morehouse College recently for the signing of his new book, Shaq Uncut, My Story. The former LA Lakers center sat down with Fox News' Kelly Wright to discuss the book and his extraordinary life. Aside from being one of history's most famous basketball players, O'Neal also moonlights as a rapper, a TV show host, and a reserve police officer. After the interview, Shaq welcomed fans on stage for a little one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you for watching City Talk. I'm Thermese Bevel.